In this video, we're going to be starting to talk about one of my favorite topics in data science, missing data. The reason I think missing data is so interesting is because it's so applicable to real data sets you're going to use when you're doing any kind of data science. When you get away from those clean, perfectly tuned data sets that have every value filled in, you're going to get cases where some or all of your columns have missing data, and it's important to know how to deal with them. We're going to get to the how to deal with them in the subsequent videos, but first, we need to talk about why and how data goes missing. It's not always missing for the same reason or goes missing in the same way. In this video, we'll be discussing the three major ways in data science um, of how data goes missing so that in future videos, we can use that mechanism to inform which methods to deal with it. So without further ado, the first method is called missing completely at random or MCAR for short. So this is the easiest case by far to think about, because in this case, the data goes missing at a completely consistent rate, no matter what. To kind of inform all of our methods here, we'll be going through the same example. So pretend in your town, you're trying to do a study of, on average, how many overdue library books does each citizen have? So in this first case, let's say you go to the library and they give you access to their internal computers. And they say, go ahead, you can just use our computers. So you go through the computers and you start finding values of how many overdue books people have. Maybe someone has one overdue book, someone else has two, someone else I'll say has five, but then you get to a very suspicious value. It's missing, there's nothing here. So you go ask the librarian and say, hey, this value is missing. And the librarian says, oh yeah, about 5% of the time, our librarians forget to type a value in just human error. And then you ask, is this 5% based on anything about the patron or about the book that they have overdue? And the librarian says, nope, it's completely random. This is a very perfect case of something that's missing completely at random, in which this 5% error rate, this 5% missing rate rather, is not dependent on anything at all. It's just 5%, each uh, value has a 5% chance of being missing. Now getting to a little bit more complicated case, we have this missing at random, often abbreviated as MAR. So I have a bit of an issue with the name here because it's almost identical to the name here, except for this word completely. But let me first explain what it is. In missing at random, the data is missing at a certain rate, but that rate depends on some other variable in the data. To lead this example, pretend you don't have access now to these library computers, so you have to do a poll and give a poll to every person in town. Let's say furthermore, you're also interested in whether males or females have more overdue books. So you ask each person, are you male or female? And you also ask them, what is the number of overdue books you currently have? Furthermore, let's say that females reply to your poll at a 90% rate. So there's only 10% missing data for females. While for males, they're only responding at a 70% rate. So there's a much higher 30% um, missing data rate for males. This is a perfect example of a case where the data is missing at random. Because although we do have missing data overall, the rate of missing data can be perfectly explained if we know a certain other factor. In this case, it's the sex of the person. This is a very simple case, of course, but in more complicated cases, um, you can have combinations of factors. For example, if you know the sex, their geographic uh, location, and you also know their family income, then you can say something about their missing data rate. But in this very simple case, it conveys the same idea. The reason I have an issue with the name is because it still has this word random in it, although you can figure out the missing data rate um, given the correct set of explanatory factors. Now the last kind of example of missing data is also the most nefarious one, and it's called missing not at random. So in this case, let's say instead of having the poll asking about whether male or female, you ask about, you literally ask them what's their name, and you ask them how many overdue books do you have. Now this is fundamentally different from the poll above because in this bottom case where you ask them their name, you can identify this person. So if someone tells you I have 15 overdue books and you ask for their name, you can now identify who has 15 overdue books and people might be self-conscious about that. So to guide this example, let's say that, um, give a couple numbers here. Let's say that if you truly have zero overdue books, then you are 90% likely to answer this poll and give how many uh, overdue books you have. Let's say if you have one overdue book, that drops to 80%. This makes sense because if you have more overdue books, if you truly have more overdue books, you're less likely to tell me about it because it's kind of an embarrassing fact about your life. And furthermore, if you have two overdue books in reality, you're only 70% likely to tell me, and so on. The general idea here is the more overdue books you truly have, 
the less likely you are to tell me about that number and the more likely I am to have a missing value for you um, in that overdue books column. Now, so the general idea of missing not at random is that the missingness of a certain value depends on the true value itself. So for example, uh, if I have a missing value for my number of overdue books, the likelihood of that value to be missing is based on how big that value truly is. If that value is truly very big, if this person has many overdue books in reality, that value is very likely to be missing. Now, if you're kind of getting a sense of a chicken and egg problem or some circular reasoning, you're absolutely correct, and which is why uh, this case is really hard for us to deal with. To kind of make it concrete, the reason this is so difficult is if I'm trying to figure out if some column with missing data is missing not at random, then I basically need to know, are those missing values based on the actual value of those values? But I don't know the actual value in that column because they're missing in the first place. So you see how I get into this really weird circular dependency here, which is hard to figure out if something is truly missing not at random. Um, just in contrast, these first two cases are a little bit easier to tease apart and figure out if a certain missing data is in one case or the other. Um, basically, something you can do with a data set is slice it on various axes. So you can slice it by the sex of the responder. You can slice it by their geographic region or their family income. And if the missing value rate is about the same for all these different axes, then you're likely in this missing completely at random case up here. If on the other hand, this missing value rate is different for all these different axes, then you're likely in this missing at random case down here. And that's it. That's the survey of the top three missing data mechanisms in data science. And it's important to know these mechanisms going forward when we look at how to deal with missing data.